Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Hey, how you doing? It's commonsensical. In other words, it makes sense. That's right, bud. That's where oh, I learned I the English that. language. I missed that. I missed that. <laughs> Don't you know? That's one of my favorite things. It's commonsensical. In other words, it makes sense. In other See, words. I talk just like that, don't I? In other words. I just make up words. <laughs> Cameron. In other words, if you, in case you weren't following along my made-up words, in the actual words, it makes sense. Cameron, the intern from his home at Paso Robles. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Good morning, Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Uh, yes, that is who we are to you. We've never actually met in person. We've never been face to face. That will change a week from today. Tomorrow, um, will be the countdown to the day that we get to have Cameron in studio because of COVID-19 regulations. He had to go out and get a COVID test, Jeff, to come into the studio. And I didn't know if he would do it because I don't know if I would do it because it, it sounds it. really uncomfortable and it's awful, but well, I wouldn't do it. Just I got to give it to you. Easy. It takes less than from, a minute. From day one, I've seen the energy and the enthusiasm that you have to come to this radio station. You've asked several times and you've been told several times. He was told, yes, we need you for the, uh, for the takeover, uh, which is a all day event. And he's like, I'll go take a COVID test. So, Soldier. Yeah. I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> It's not even like, you know, it, it was fine, you know. It's, it takes easy, easy five minutes. But what I found out is... Did they is, shove is, that oh. Q-tip way up your nose? Yeah. Yeah, that was the one I did. Oh. Is, is there other options? Because you get the free one, right? Yeah, there's other options. <laughs> this was hey, a, a They could shove one, something somewhere else. Accurate one. You know, they could be shoving something up somewhere else on your body, and that could be the free one. Wait, so I guess up your nose isn't that bad. You said there's, an, uh, there's other options, but there's a more accurate one? So, yeah, the one I did is the most accurate one. Oh, okay. And then there's others that, like... I think there's a saliva one in now. 15 minutes. There's the Costco one you can buy. It's expensive. And uh, you breathe into it, and you, it takes a few days. My favorite COVID test was the one that they were saying you could do at home on your own. Um, this was back in March when it came about. And they said, you know, if you can hold your breath for 10 seconds, then... Without uh, coughing. Without coughing, then your chances yeah, are you... That was fake. But every smoker thought they had COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was fake news. You are fake news. <laughs> oh. You are fake news. It's so, so funny. I heard somebody say the other day, if, if 2020 has taught us anything, it has taught us the necessity of being flexible. I point to the two biggest, the pe- to two people that uh, have the biggest impact in my life, and that would be my wife and you. And you guys are the least flexible person, uh, people when it comes to things. Like you guys have to have things planned out, planned, 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 planned. Are you talking to Cameron and I or me? You and your wife and my wife have to have things planned out. Yeah. Oh, come on, really? Yeah. I really. I you, have to have you've done out. a better job of of adapting to the flexibility. Uh, well, she just hasn't known you long enough. I've known you way longer. How she, long have you known your wife? Ten this years. Is driving her nuts. Is it what ten years? She's have you known so, your wife? She's so over this because she can't plan anything. No, I know, but she, I realize you realize I've known you for so long that I just gave up like a decade ago. I'm just like forget it. Good. I'm not going to argue with him because it's pointless. Do you oh. know anybody like that, Cameron? Uh. What, what, like, known someone for, for years? No, no, known someone that it, they're so stubborn that it's easier just to give in and then fight them. Yes, myself. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that is such an odd person. That took a weird turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> but anyways, why don't your wife You're and I... You're listening to Jeff, Jeremy, and Dexter in the morning. I'm just surprised. <laughs> and I'm not saying your wife and I aren't friends, but we don't hang out or anything. I'm surprised we're not because we have the, you in common that we don't like have plans of attack and strategically no, plan could. to take you down you could. to win. Let's, but we don't. Let's plan out an entire week and stick to that yeah. schedule. I guess that I don't would, care. That but. would be the way to take me down. <laughs> Why did you bring this up? This is because I just I, I was wondering if it, it drives you as crazy as it drives my wife as crazy. And because... She's not the type that is, wants to adapt to this new way of living where you have to be flexible. And the NFL has taught us anything by playing games on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, we're going to just make this happen. Yeah, I'm, 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 I guess I'm okay with being flexible. I just feel like this hasn't affected me as much as it has affected other people. 
Like you have kids, so they want to go do things that yeah. they can't do. I get to do what I like to do. Thank God I like fishing. I can go to a lake. I can be by myself. And so you have that, that outlet. That you really that hasn't outlet. affected me too much. For somebody who is actually you have you've thrived in this in this situation because you used to have a lot of work to do, but because of the nature of your work, no, because of the nature of the work that you were doing. I know one of the shows pretty much got yeah. I mean, you know, it's still around. Laid off. But, it laid but, off. I mean, you guys are on hiatus because yeah. you can't go to the places where you used to go and do it because it would be frowned upon by the not only the governor, but the customers uh, and the uh, employees at those places. So it's like, what do you do, you know? But you have found a nice pivot, and you're like, I guess I'll go fishing. <laughs> I, I do. I've been fishing a lot it's more. Like a, it's, it's like a... It's really helpful. It's like a uh, dry run, um, uh, practice run. At retirement for you. It really is. I am already starting to think about retirement. It's interesting you brought that up. I'm looking at a condo uh, down in uh, in Arizona. Boca. In Arizona, yeah. <laughs> we live in a condo complex with a bunch of middle-aged guys that uh, want the to retire. Condos aren't early. bad, man. Condos aren't bad if you've got a pool. <laughs> no. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to start texting your wife. Like, hey, we we, we got to get together. Let's plan right? some stuff today. That's yeah. how you could get it. Let's mean, plan hey, some stuff. you know stuff. what? We'll take Jeff's down. being a real jerk today. I, you know what I would like to do? Let's, I'd like to. Let's, let's can, we, can we both plan out uh, our afternoons and have him involved? I'll plan. Let's start with next week because it'll be too obvious. And I'll plan something for every day of the show, which will drive him nuts. And then you plan something when he gets home. Yeah. And then together, it'll just fry. Yeah. It'll fry. For sure. But anyways, back to Cameron. You understand that the expectations of when you don't plan things make life much much happier. Oh, yes, you've been telling me this forever. All right. The expectations of planning are what really screws you over. What drives people nuts are the people that uh, program directors and managers and um, consultants that work with us because... You know, how this job normally works is a morning show team is what they call them will get together and they will plan everything to the T. They'll talk spread about spreadsheets. Yeah, I spreadsheets, mean, times, is, boss, when they're going to do is, it. This is what we're going to talk about. To the about point where they know. 720. Yes. And when you take that 720 break, Cameron, it's not just about knowing that we're going to talk about this, but this is how it's going to end. You start with the end and you work yourself backwards. So there's no spontaneity to it at all because you've already know where it's going. And it's, 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 it's like, it's it like gets very eight, boring. Very 70 fast. to 80% scripted is what they want. And Jeff has fought this from the beginning and thank God he has because I, it took me a while to figure it out. But, um, yeah. Because, I mean, can we just do dumbass of the day and, and call it good? Like, for example, and on Monday we're going to play a game and uh, we're going to give away some coffee. I mean, can't that just be enough? What we just did here in the last, I don't know, seven minutes Not would have never that. happened Not because that. I wanted to talk about Cameron coming in, the fact that he had to get a COVID test and what that was like. But yet we have not talked about that at all. We ended up always talking about Jeff, his wife, and how he doesn't like to be told what to do. Yeah. By me or his wife. And now that I know that you want to get at this... Uh, but if we would have done the scripted out thing, this would have never got right. there. Right. And, and now that I know that you want to find out about Cameron's COVID test, I'm going to make it my mission to make sure that that does not get brought up for, I don't know, maybe two to three hours. You, so, I can't imagine yeah. Suzanne's blood pressure working with you two. <laughs> Well, we don't really she's work actually, that close together. She's actually fine with it. She, because we, she likes it. We, she was she's, a fan she's before never, she got the job. Yeah, she was on the show. She was a fan. But then when she had to start managing, I think we're pretty easy to manage. You know, man, she manages the radio I station. Actually, we come with that. So If we ever had an outsider, though, come in and, and do her job, like say she moved on somewhere else and then somebody else applied for that job, right? that person would hate us and we would hate that person. So, well, you got the guy fired. It was the guy that hired us. I mean, can you imagine somebody that I, loved on, you so much, brought you from another state I did not here, get fired. made I did not sure get fired. you got the job, you helped, and then, and then of course, you butted heads, and then you got him <laughs> fired. I mean, literally within six months of him hiring you. Dick! That's what Jeff did. The guy, Cameron, told you, me <laughs> to talk about CSI because everybody who listens to classic rock likes, likes to watch CSI because the Who songs. Not just C- CSI, but CSI Miami. <laughs> yeah, this, the, <laughs> the worst one. The Who songs open up the, the, the show, and I was like, I don't really like the show. <laughs> He's like, I don't care if you don't like the show. You're going to watch it. You're you going to talk he about said, it. He said, Google it and get a synopsis and talk about it the next day. I said, I'm not doing that. Mm. And that's where it was the beginning of the end. For the Boyle Jeff relationship, boy, we've now we've covered multiple things in this conversation. Would you ever be comfortable if I said to you, "I just want to know if Cameron, it hurts. Cameron, let's say you didn't take a COVID test, <laughs> okay? Let's just say you didn't take a COVID test, 
And Jeremy and I come to you and we're like, okay, uh, we're going to do a break in three minutes because that's usually how it works. And, uh, and you know, we're thinking, we're talking about this. Um, have you taken a COVID test? And your answer was no. And we're like, well, just pretend like you took a COVID test. Would you be comfortable talking about that? No, that sounds like it'd end up a terrible show. Yeah, and and the last... The, that's how most radio shows are done. I would, I would yeah, that, that's why most radio shows are horrible, and this one is probably not excluded from that. But I... It's I just, horrible in other ways. I just want to highlight that this is real, what we do. We just have real conversations, and that's, that's what people yeah. do in life. Yeah. It's no zany, you know, none of this... <laughs> No, Why is that there then? Because I like it. Because <laughs> it pointed, <laughs> pointed right at my face. It needs, to, it needs to bring us back to our roots. Hey, CSI last night. Whoa, did you see how many times? <laughs> Mulder? No, that's a different show. I forget the guy's name. You know, I mean, it, okay. it's, it's, like, it's like, but I'll tell you this. I'd much rather take a COVID test than watch CSI Miami. <sighs> I had a lot to talk about COVID tests because I've never had one. I'm very curious. I don't think most people have. Maybe we'll get to it in the next three hours. <laughs> Sure, because I plan less. In what life. I say to you today? I, I, I a little. You, it's like it's not. It, you forgot? It's like fifteen different things you say no. to me. <laughs> no, it was one thing, and I was like, I found this website or Facebook page, Cameron. It's called Slow Eats. S L O Eats. So it's San oh, Luis yeah. Obispo, and I'm like, it's talking about this great pokey, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, man, this looks really good. And then I click on it. It's a pokey place at the SeaTac International Airport in Seattle, Washington the hell is it featured on the slow eats page for and now and then he gets mad at me for ignoring him when he's telling me about this because i'm but he knows why i'm ignoring him because i just want to get set up and get going and he's like oh is it, uh, getting uh, advertisements from the SeaTac airport what am i getting SeaTac airport advertisements for and he's asking me like, i didn't I'm, actually say that mark friggin that was all in your head that was all well where were you getting at by mentioning it then i can't remember now i just thought we'd had a moment i'm not mark okay I guess I'm guilty of doing it to you. But if it's fantasy football, he wants to hear all about it. Anyways, it's not about us. It's about George Clooney and his wife, Amal. Is that how you say it? A-M-A-L? Sure. I'm so done with celebrity. I'm just... Right. I... Apparently, you know, he George Clooney came out last week. It wasn't enough that he got the spotlight for a claiming that he, he's been cutting his hair with a Floby his whole life. You know what a Floby is, right, Cameron? Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah, the vacuum with the clippers. Yeah. They were very popular in the 80s. I don't even know where you buy one of those now. Maybe on eBay. Made them. I wish they still, I would cut my hair all the time. Well, how does he have one? I th- we think it's a liar. And I know he's a liar because he said him and his wife, Amal, during this whole lockdown, nine months, have not had one argument. Not one fight. Not one disagreement. Look at me. I cut my own hair. And... I have a perfect marriage. I know. This is what it should say. when you, The look at me from George Clooney, because this is like the ultimate look at me. I used to live in Lanford, Illinois. I was the boss of people that made widgets. I would, from time to time, date my co-workers, like Aunt Jackie. <laughs> and now, I'm married to a mall. I don't get in fights with her. I cut my hair with a floor. What was his name? And I show? live on a booker. Booker. <laughs> <laughs> And I live on a so, lake. Booker. And I live on a lake somewhere in Italy. <laughs> Apparently, George says him and his wife, Amal, have not gotten in one argument, not one fight. Now, granted, they probably live in a pretty big yeah, house. Yeah, that's right? the thing. I mean, you live in a 10-room mansion. Like, there's times you can and get They're away. definitely not fighting about money, right? I mean, they got enough of that. Like, my mom is on my ass constantly. But still, you find other things that get on your nerves. Ask my wife. She'll give you a whole list of things that just I do that drives her nuts. My mom is on my ass constantly about not socially distancing, not staying at home, you know, like getting out too much and all that stuff. She is, it, she's been in her house. She's gotten out probably since March. I would say outside of grocery store visits, visits which are necessity, I would say maybe 25 times. And that's just to take a drive, just to get out of the house, because she's, she's I saw busy. her pitch post uh, pictures with her grandkids, not you know, your brothers. And yeah, them. but like that's like a big deal. But they were all wearing masks. Yeah, exactly. For the photo, <laughs> <laughs> you know they didn't have. A I photo. don't know. I don't know, and I don't ask, and I don't care. She's and, and I'm like, listen, I don't have the luxury of being retired, 
and just kicking around the house. I have a family to account for. I have to move forward. Okay, I'm not. I I I just have to. It's that is a necessity to me. I just can't be like, oh, sorry, I can't go to work today. Yeah. There's a pandemic going on. This is not going to work. It's not going to work for me. But for George and Amal, who have the 10 bedrooms, the millions and millions of dollars just sitting on stacks of cash, of course they can hang out at home because they're not going to get in each other's way. When he's Who's there. cooking dinner? When he's and what are we having? If Gloria Stefan has a chef, oh, then but George they're... Clooney has a chef. So the chef gets to come in? Okay. I mean, one come, would surmise that, right? I mean, come on. So you're telling me that nobody does the laundry there. Uh, they have somebody that does it. Nobody is their, their chef. Nobody does their shopping. They don't have nothing to argue about. The hell do they do all day? He sits there and he makes widgets. And flobies his hair. Makes people clock in and flobies his hair. I guarantee you. Well, I can't guarantee anything. But normally when you hear something like this, they're getting along so well. Within six months, they'll be getting a divorce. Because that's usually how it happens with celebrities. Is George Clooney a good actor? I think so, yeah. I mean, can you... He's, con- he's, he's, he's convinced us all that he cuts his hair with a floby, and he never <laughs> argues with his wife, so he's not being bad. I look at George Clooney and Jennifer Aniston as being the male-female counterparts of those people that are famous, and you necessarily don't know why, because nothing that they did was groundbreaking. I mean, name a movie that Clooney did that you're like, wow... He Ocean's was, Eleven. He was amazing in that movie. No, I didn't say name a movie that Clooney did. I said name a movie that Clooney did that you were like, man, Clooney made that movie. Name one. Roseanne. <laughs> Booker. <laughs> Booker. <laughs> he, didn't even, he wasn't even know. a star in that. Yeah, I know. I know. But it doesn't matter. Um, I, and, and if you guys aren't on board with this, I'm okay with that. But I don't believe George. I think he's a liar. I don't think he uses a floby. And I don't think he's never had an argument with his wife for so nine months. He's not had one argument. This is yes, George Clooney, you are Jeremy's. Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOC. Don't be a dummy when it comes to your landscape supplies. Go to Peterson Ucard on Gusta Road, just north of Quickie Car Wash in Atascadero. We love you. You car, you stay. Cameron, are you there? Yeah. All right, good. So on a scale of, you know, 1 to 10, pain, w- discomfort, Cameron just recently got a COVID test. It was a free COVID test, the one where they shoved the cotton swab up your nose. But the free one is the most effective one, according to you. The cotton swab one. This this free one yeah. is the most effective. What, what is the discomfort pain level? One to ten, the, the ten one, being the worst. The one where you go and cough into a guy's hands behind the Walmart, that one's not very effective? No, no, that one takes about two weeks to even figure out if it works. <laughs> it's gross. You have to just keep driving by that guy and see if he's doing okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hand him a beer every now and then, and he, he thanks me for his time. What's the pain? Um, I would say it is about... A five. Oh, that's not terrible. I mean, like, obviously, it's it, not comfortable. But I would say it's not comfortable. It stings a little, and it made my eyes water. But like, it's basically gone. In, my mom had to know, have one done because she was going to have a surgery. So she she sneezed all day. Did you sneeze? Um. See, I have bad allergies, so yeah. I, I I I do sneeze. I think everybody does here. It's freaking living here is awful. Uh with the allergies, anyways. And then you said also this was not your first test. You'd had other ones done. Yes. Yes, sir. Was the second one better or worse than the, or the same? Oh, I would say this one was worse because the lady had to hold it in there for five seconds when the first time they just kind of like stuck it in. Do you get that? Okay. Um. I get what? I'm confused why you would have so many COVID tests if you just sit at home in your bedroom all day. Well, we talked about this off air. I've only had two. Which is a lot. That's, that's a lot more than more, I've had. Two more than we have. And listen, I, I mean, I'm coming in contact with a lot of people. I think you're going to have to have another one because I think you have to have it within 48 hours of coming to the radio station. But it sounds like you enjoy, you enjoy it, so it shouldn't be a big deal. You like that. <laughs> No, the the first one was because I went. I I was in a a big public event. Mm-hmm. I was at a protest, and then this one is because uh, I want to come see my my two favorite 
my two favorite dads, Jeff and Jeremy, in the morning. Um, God. You know, it's sad as we could be your damn dad. That sucks. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm just coming to terms. It's my midlife crisis. Oh, I, just, I just turned 45. Be his dad. I, I just, mean, yeah, like, I just turned 45, and I just, it's just like, ugh. I have friends with sons that are much older than Cameron. you lucky I'm not your dad. You would never wear sweaters. Never, never. And you'd have short hair. Okay, Daddy. It's weird. Yeah. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> you know, you're not coming in. I'm sorry you've got to go. Say that all the time. <laughs> when you come in, I'm here, Daddy. <laughs> Holy Please cow. Do what that. He's been lobbying so hard to get you to come in, and I want him to regret, regret his, uh, his... Well, I want him to come in because he wants to be here. Um... <laughs> how much? Hey, I have a question from you on the protest front. How much protesting did you do when you went to the protest, or did you just go to see what happened? Because this used to happen a lot when I was your age. I would be like, I wouldn't really necessarily be about the cause. You were in a real protest. WTO. D- yeah, WTO was like hardcore. Like in Seattle, it was crazy. Um, like they were, you know, tear gas canisters. I had a guy, uh, bang, a, a police officer, Bombs. point a uh, rubber bullet gun at me. Um, just because I walked out on my balcony, it was crazy. It was, it was nuts. Um, and, um, and, but I, the reason why I was even at the protest, because I just wanted to see what's going to happen. What percentage of you was about the cause and what percentage of you was like, oh, I just kind of want to see what happens. Um, I was a hundred percent behind the cause because, uh, but you have to say that, right? You can't just say, no, 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 hey, I, I was a hundred percent. Did you have a sign? Did you make a sign? Did you make a, did you make a sign? If you're a hundred percent, you get arrested. Did you make a sign? I, I did make a sign. Uh, he just went right there. the thing is, is that the Paso, I went to the Paso, uh, it was a, it was a BLM protest. What does your sign say? What did my sign say? Why do you keep repeating the questions? Are you trying to think of an answer? Why do I keep repeating the question? Am I trying to think of an answer? God, I would kill you if you were my kid. I swear to God, you wouldn't even be breathing right now. I pepper spray you every day. I just say, well, you get to, up. You're getting pepper sprayed before second. school. You made it sound like you went to a big protest. You went to the Paso Robles. Yeah, that's protest. yeah. They that hung was, out in the park and played frisbee. That was much different. Played froth. Okay. Um. Yes. Yeah. So it was. It was like. I think people said it was estimated like a hundred people, but yeah, compared to the one in slow, was everybody fire, wearing a mask? Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, why did so. you feel like you need to get tested? Were people like climbing on top of you? Oh, I was near some people, and then you know people don't always keep their their masks on hundred percent of the time. Okay, so there just... was one lady who yelled at me that uh, George Brown deserved it because he was on crack, which I'm not entirely sure how accurate that is. And who's George also, Brown? Yeah, who's matter? George Brown? Who's or George Brown? George Floyd. Yeah. Oh, oh God! You went to a protest. You didn't even know who you were protesting for. <laughs> Son of a! This is what no. I mean. You should have been pepper sprayed every day of your this is why high I school think, life. This is why I think before Independence High School. I honestly think that you know, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you might have, you know, you were a hundred percent behind the cause. Nailed I, it. I think a lot of people just go down to him and check him out. You just said you were a hundred percent behind the cause, and you didn't even get the guy's name right. What the? I misspoke. You can't even pronounce the word rural. Rural. Okay. I just did. Don't deflect. Oh, here. he's getting mad now. Don't deflect here. Because, I mean, you really got the name wrong. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I combined yeah. two dudes who uh, got hurt. Well, not just got hurt, died, but that's but a discussion got, for a different time. You got time. it really wrong. Yeah, you did. Say I got it wrong. So be honest. Because everybody, no, I know I got it wrong. I'm not. Everybody I'm that not. went to a Black Lives Matter protest that knew his name is upset with, with you right now. I guarantee it. Oh my god! I mean, you okay. You said his name, but you only said like half of it. You called him George so Brown. That's why I think that you're like you're like halfway into. I mean, I'm not saying that what you're not doing is noble. I, I think half of it, you're behind the cause, half of it, and then, but also half of you was like, oh, let's just see what happens. You still want to come in? <laughs> <laughs> Still want to come hang out? you, Jeremy? Come Any on. Day of the week. You don't annoy me. I don't know why you think you do. <laughs> Could you imagine I think I annoy you. Could you imagine if, if, if we were a gay couple, Jeremy, and we raised a, a son? And, um, Wait, you guys aren't a gay why couple? Why can't we be a straight couple that raised a son? <laughs> okay, if we were a straight couple that raised a son, how much, uh, how, how much therapy that son would have to go yeah, through that would be because of discussions like this? Yes. <laughs> Well, you're not really 100% into it. <laughs> and you would, I don't know how, I would be proud of it. I'd be like, yeah, 
That's right. My son's in therapy? Yeah, he's tough. You know why? Because <laughs> we destroy that kid mentally every day of his well, life. It doesn't kill you. makes you stronger, yeah. right? All right, Cameron. Well, we're excited to have you in. I can't wait to do this for four, 13 hours. How many hours? Yeah, you'll hate us at the end of this. What's season. his name again? What? Whose name? My name? The guy. You the forgot pro- my name? No, your name. Not your name. The protest you went to. The... The was, name of the who, protest? Who was it for? Yeah, who was it for? Who were you? Who were George you? Floyd. There you go. Okay, good. See? We'll give you a second. Yeah. I just want to make sure that you got it right. That's all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Great talking to you. We'll see you in a minute. We'll be right back.